find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pie. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 109, our uh, interview series, our independent pro wrestling talk here. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios. Uh, video production uh, for the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, uh, 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 editor and filmer of, of the uh, uh, legendary, the, the legend of Virgil and his uh, his traveling merchandise table, and so much more over at IndieWrestling.us. With me is my Patreon, pa- not my Patreon. My patron, my my my, but the patron saint, saint of the Indies. It's Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. That's your new name now. My patron, patron patron Payton. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah. from before we record the shows. Uh, hi guys, I'm excited to be back. So I talk about indie wrestling once again with a good buddy Sultron. Yes, and of course we got a great, great, great interview with somebody a little more than indie wrestling. Uh, in a moment. But uh, first, please go check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this show and others. A lot of wrestling talk going on over there. A lot of great columns as well as over at IndieWrestling.us uh, and uh, you subscribe on everything from iTunes, YouTube, uh, uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, all over the place. Uh, please drop us a line. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the phone number 412-206-WMS0. And, uh, and 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 check us out live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com around about eh, 11 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. All right, uh, this week, Eamon, uh we 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 talked with uh, pre-recorded here, but we talked with uh, Jimmy Corderas, former WWE referee for geez over 20 years at least. I, th- I think it was uh, a really great conversation with him. Matt and Mike joined us because I, I, it was I, I think a rather appropriate that we had another former WWE employee uh, join us for the conversation with Jimmy and uh, of course you know worked with, with him a couple years ago on the uh, refereeing 101 project uh, that, that is over on Joe Dabrowski's website as well as uh, ours for IndieWrestling.us. Hey guys and through the time vortex we're right here we're uh, ready to uh, uh, talk with our guests of honor for uh, this week's Indie Mayhem show. First of all I want to introduce uh, uh, hanging on I, I think it's very appropriate we had uh, our, uh, as we like to say on the Wrestling Mayhem show, he's the only guy typically on the show with a future endeavored letter from the WWE. He's Mad Mike in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, thanks for joining us, man. Hi, Sorg. And, you know, and, and I'm so glad that we we can share. This is the second time we, we of course, we had Chris Joseph on the show in the past a couple of times. I'm so glad you can share the show with other former employees of the WWE. That's a, uh, so we're having going to have a lot of fun here. Uh, but uh, he's I've had the pleasure of working with this guy a couple of years ago on the Refereeing 101 uh, DVD. Um, over, uh, you can find it uh, all kinds of places online. But Jimmy Corderas, former referee with the WWE, I guess, all the way to back back to WWF, honestly, right? Uh, joining us right now. Hi, yeah. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. I'm sitting here. I'm sipping on my little water. It is water. Trust me, my old school. Look, I, for WrestleMania season, WrestleMania 19 uh, mug. <laughs> I'm going to turn this around just so you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on there. It, uh, it's very interesting how it has the. Uh, what is it? Biceps, bagels, breakfast, right. thingamabob. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Just having fun. Reminiscing, you know. That's awesome. That's that's amazing. Uh, uh, so, so like I said, I got, to, I got to sit down and talk with you a little bit uh, when we're doing some stuff around the DVD. Uh, of course, Joe Nebraski, uh, a, a part of bringing that together. And, of course, you know, uh, working with you here with Prime Wrestling and the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, in the Pittsburgh and Cleveland areas. Uh, so we like to kind of like kind of break down a little bit because we like to say that everybody involved with this thing to this extent is a, it starts as a fan, right? Uh, so oh. so t- tell me, what what kind of got you started in wrestling? What's your earliest memory of, of pro wrestling that really kind of uh, uh, captured you a little bit? Well, well, for me, uh, you know, I, I gravitated towards wrestling as a, as a kid and, you know, um, like anybody else, my brother would watch it. And as a really young kid, I, I kind of, you know, stayed glued to the TV. And as I got older, um, I started, you know, obviously watching and getting really hooked myself. But luckily here in Toronto, we were fortunate enough to give not just one or two promotions that would air on television. We had um, WWWF on television out of Buffalo Affiliates. We got Maple Leaf Wrestling, which was Frank Tunney's 
old promotion as well. We used to get uh, on one channel out of Barrie, Ontario, we used to get Stampede Wrestling. On Global TV, we used to get AWA Wrestling, International Wrestling from Montreal on City TV. I mean, it was like a smorgasbord of wrestling. You couldn't tear me away from the TV on Sunday. Oh, wow. And of course, being Canadian couple, that was Hockey Night in Canada on Saturday nights. I, br- I rarely left the house on the weekends. It was amazing. Oh, geez. It sounds like it sounds like a, it sounds like heaven up there. <laughs> well, for me, it was. Eh? That's <laughs> it, amazing. it wasn't heaven for anybody else who wanted to watch television. That's for sure. <laughs> certainly. Certainly. That, that's awesome. So, so it, it, it's, it really is like, you know, I, I remember there was the thing coming up, going around a, a, a few years ago of like, you know, uh, here it's entertainment in Canada. It's 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 sport or it's religion or whatever the case was in the meme that was going around. But it, it sounds like you really had a lot of opportunity. Uh, yeah, especially, you know, uh, like I said, growing up in this area and getting to experience so many different uh, different uh, styles, different promotions, different ways of pres- uh, wrestling presentation. Obviously, as a, as a youngster, as a kid, you don't appreciate that. But as you get older and you start to kind of think you understand more about what's going on, you kind of can appreciate stuff like that. Awesome. So, so we've had people on the show. We've had other referees on the show. Uh, Jake Clemens, um, who I know attended your seminar. Oh, actually, gee, Jake. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a lot of people down here say too. Actually, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, a little belated here, but I think happy birthday, Jake, from a few days ago as, as well. Uh, but anyways, oh damn, I missed it. Okay, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. This will run late anyways. I was like, oh, it's completely today. <laughs> it was completely today when we recorded this. Um, but um, okay. anyways, so so we talked to him a little bit about how how do you become a referee? Like, I, what what makes you decide to get into that part of the wrestling business? And of course, the business was you know way different when you got in there. And I know, I know, I remember you recounting the story uh, when we were recording for refereeing uh, one hundred and one. Uh, can you tell us how? How does somebody come from being a spectator to getting in the ring and getting, and getting the zebra stripes on? Yeah, uh, I guess it, it, everybody's got their own little story. Mine started, um, as you know, Mike, um, I started going to – I had what was the equivalent of season tickets to Maple Leaf Gardens. They used to run every three weeks like clockwork um, because they ran – um, every three weeks on a Sunday was Maple Leaf Gardens. Monday was Brantford, Ontario to, uh, to film Wrestling Challenge. Nice. And then Tuesday, everybody would go to Poughkeepsie, New York for Superstars of Wrestling. Yeah. So that was the regular schedule back in the day. And I used to attend every, every you know, show at Maple Leaf Gardens. And I would take pictures and I'd come back and sell them. And long story short, uh, uh, it was kind of illegal to do so. And, but somebody who worked for Jack Tunney at the time, uh, Elio Zarlenga, he caught me doing it, and instead of turning me in, basically we became good friends and introduced me to Jack, and and Jack's, you know, Ilio said, no, maybe, maybe we could hire him as a photographer or something like that, and Jack said, well, we don't need another photographer, we'll find something for the kid to do, and, you know, started off as driving guys around and, and setting up the ring and that sort of stuff, but uh, as far as getting into refereeing, that was actually a suggestion by Pat Patterson, who said to Jack basically one day, he said, look, he's here, he's setting up. He sits around all day waiting for the show to finish to tear down the ring. Why don't we put him to work? We'll make him a referee. And, you know, of course, Jack in his, uh, in his um, way just looked at Pat and said, uh, do we really want to smarten him up? Mm. And uh, Pat, you know, Pat was like, well, you know, he's here. He's in the locker room. He's already around the boys. He knows he, he knows the deal. Well, well, you know, we'll teach him to rep. So, you know, uh, Eventually, uh, uh, Pat told me to get a blue shirt, a black bow tie, black pants, and black sneakers, and always carry it with me, which I did. And then one day, Chief Jay Strongbow said at a, at a house show in Newmarket, Ontario, he says, you got your ref gear? And I said, yes, I do. He says, put it on. You're reffing tonight. And I was like, what? <laughs> Hold on a sec here. Nobody's been, like, kind of coaching me along, but uh, thank goodness uh, uh, guys like Billy Red Lions and, and – uh, you know, rep, the the old school refs like like Dave Hebner and Tim White and uh, those guys were, were there to coach me. And, of course, S.D. Jones was great because oh, wow. he was in the first match and he talked me through the whole thing, got me through it. I was uh, uh, so stiff. Uh, people were screaming, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. I mean, it was <laughs> that bad. But, but he got me through it and the rest was history. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. It is amazing because I, I, it was very eye-opening uh, working with you on the project uh, uh, there uh, and learning so much about refereeing because it is it seems like, oh, it's just the guy out there and he counts to three, right? Um, but there is so much mm-hmm. more. You know, like you had to be walked through. It wasn't just you go out there. And, and I think you do mm-hmm. see that when you see like wrestlers kind of take over the role and you're like, wait, something, you know, this isn't like how refereeing usually goes, right? Um, like h- how, how much did you have to learn to get into wrestling and, and kind of uh, not be so robotic, I guess? Yes. I, it, it, it takes a lot. It takes a, a lot of time. It takes a lot of uh, it, it's, it's like anything else. It's repetition. It's getting experience. It's getting in there and getting comfortable with uh, with uh, the guys you're working with, getting comfortable with how you move, because, you know, uh, it, it, it may sound stupid, but I would watch my early matches on TV back because, you know, they take them three weeks ahead of time. So. You know, I'd watch the match back and I'd look at myself and I'd say, man, I look like I walk like a robot. It looks like there's something wrong with me or something like that. You know, you know, I'm my own worst critic. So it's all a matter of gaining experience and just feeling comfortable. And the biggest thing is to stop thinking about it. You know, if you start thinking about, oh, why am I moving? How do I move? How do I you know, do this? Once you start doing that, that's when it starts getting robotic. If you know what I mean, you just have to feel natural and as i got older and started uh, learning more and started understanding more the role of the referee that's when i got more comfortable with uh with how i worked in the ring um never completely uh, happy with it always wanting to be better because you're always learning in a business that keeps evolving it changes all the time so you can't uh you can't be complacent with with uh you know, oh, oh, well, I got it. I know everything. No, you don't, because it's going to change tomorrow or next week. So so that's the biggest thing. You're, you're always learning and evolving. And you learn from everybody. You learn from the boys. You learn from the producers or the agents. You learn from the other reps. You have to have an open mind. And uh, and the biggest thing, like I always said, like I said, again, you can't think you know everything. Once you think you know everything, you might as well get out. Certainly, certainly. Um, so like, you know, you, you, you kind of got into this, you, you were around, you got into the ring. Um, uh, did you have kind of thoughts to become a wrestler initially, or you were, you, you just kind of wanted to be around everything? Um, I, I, probably a little column A and a little column B, obviously mm-hmm. I wanted to definitely be around it in some capacity doing anything, uh, you know, like I said, setting up the ring, driving the guys, uh, to and from events, that sort of thing. Um, obviously it's in the back of your mind. You, you always wish, you know, one day to be a superstar, to be a wrestler, to be, you know, in the ring and performing in front of whatever, 10, 20, 70,000 people that always crosses your mind. Um, once I began refereeing though, and I was close enough to understand what it entailed becoming a professional wrestler, um, I don't want to say that I don't think I could have done it. I think I may have done it, but I don't think that would have been my calling. If you know what I mean? I don't think I would have been very good at it. I think I would have been able to possibly do it because when I was younger, I was obviously more athletic when I was younger, but um, I, I think for me, I discovered that refereeing, I think was, it felt like that's what I was born to do. If that makes sense. And it kind of, um, made me feel that not becoming a professional wrestler was, was, you know, some grand design, you know what I mean? It it was in the stars that way, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you know, I did have those aspirations, but quickly we discovered that refereeing was probably best for me. Awesome. Awesome. Um, with the WrestleMania on the horizon, do you remember the first match you refed at WrestleMania? And did you get a chance to like just be in the ring before the wrestlers came out and take it all in? Yeah, uh, my first WrestleMania was WrestleMania four in Atlantic City, uh, Trump Plaza, the the, the the infamous tournament uh, to crown a new champion, which happened to be Macho Man on that thing. Um, well, actually, got Joey, the late Joey Morella and I got to kick off WrestleMania with the Battle Royal. We walking down with the trophy, um, and we actually the day before WrestleMania on the Saturday we did kind of like a dry run rehearsal of taking the trophy down and placing it, and you know, 
then showing us where they wanted us to stand and that sort of stuff. And uh, in the process, we were rehearsing uh, bringing the trophy into the ring for the presentation at the end. And I handed it up to Joey, and, and it was a heavy trophy. But I managed to get it up, but it was a lot top-heavy. So when I got it to him, it kind of tipped over and snapped in half. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so we broke we broke the Battle Royal trophy the day before WrestleMania and started <laughs> to, like, panic and go, uh-oh, what do we do? But uh, fortunately for us, the Trump Plaza Convention Center had a good group of carpenters <laughs> that uh, repaired the trophy for us in time for WrestleMania the next day. The only problem was they repaired it a little too well because – when Brett got screwed by Bad News Brown at the end, he was went to break the trophy and had a little trouble breaking it because they kind of did a good job repairing it. But uh, that was my first WrestleMania match, which was actually kind of cool. That, that always seemed like kind of an awkward uh, turn of events at the end of that at that match, and it's interesting to see see why. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, but at, at the same time, uh, you know, what, in hindsight, thinking back, I'm thinking Bad News Brown and Bret Hart. Oh yeah, they used to work together in Calgary. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? To have these guys, you, you know, they've had matches in the past. If I'm not mistaken, um, I think, was it them? I, I could be wrong, but I think they actually had a ladder match in Calgary. Oh, wow. Uh, I want to say, was it? No, 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 no. Uh, it wasn't It wasn't bad news. But anyways, uh, they did have a feud in Calgary, those two. So, um, you know, bringing it to the main stage kind of makes sense. It's awesome. Uh, so again, you know, you've been with it over the years. I know you're there Monday nights. I see you every every Monday night on the Twitter uh, <laughs> during Raw. Uh, it's it's uh, usually uh, you and Lance Storm, and <laughs> every once in a while Xbox needs to pop up. Uh, but yeah. so you're still very involved in in watching the show. I feel like a lot of guys kind of say, "Okay, I'm done with this. I don't even watch the stuff anymore." Um, you mm -hmm. know, I, I is that just I you can't get enough of it? Well, it's um, it's twofold. I, obviously, I'm still a huge fan. I love, um, I love Bruno San Martino. Told me when I first started, he said, uh, you know, uh, he said you. I always remember this. He said to me, he goes, "Hey kid, you want some advice?" I said, "Are you kidding? Bruno San Martino's offering me advice? Yeah, I would love it." He <laughs> says, "Get out." I said, "Get out of work. Get out of the business because once it's in your blood, it never leaves." And he's mm -hmm. right; it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And Along with being a huge fan of professional wrestling still to this day, and not just WWE, I like all forms and presentations of, of I'm going to say it here, sports entertainment. I don't care if you call it um, <laughs> WWE, TNA, ROH, New Japan Pro Wrestling. It is sports entertainment. Real wrestling is in the Olympics and NCAA. But anyways, okay, I got that off my chest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as well as that, up here in Canada, I'm also – um, I guess you'd consider an, uh, a wrestling analyst on a television show up here called Aftermath, which is on, if you're in Canada, it's on Sportsnet 360. And they all the, they air all the Canadian uh, uh, WWE programming in Canada that is not on the WWE network. So what we do is we have a post, I guess you'd call it a post game show after SmackDown, which airs in Canada on Wednesday nights, not Thursday uh it's what i like to refer to as wrestling's version of the talking dead so we just recap the week we talk about what we liked and what we didn't like and and you know it's just just a fun a fun discussion about what is going on in wwe that's it and uh, i also do some stuff with the fight network with my good friend john pollock over there and um you know we recap uh pay-per-views or special events or whatever the they are labeled these days and uh and uh, having fun and writing blogs and and for for uh, for websites and that sort of thing and just still enjoying wrestling and actually making a living off of still off wrestling. So that's awesome. And the best of both worlds, and I get to be home every night <laughs> until they drag you down here to Pittsburgh, right? <laughs> well, that's okay. I don't mind the odd. I don't mind the odd road trip. It's just the uh, the weekly grind. Uh, oh man, maybe not. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, we do, we do something similar like that um, with the midweek war. We talk about basically every show that happens in the middle of the week, and we kind of compare them against each other. Have you ever had a chance to watch any of Lucha Underground? Uh, not enough. I it, See, again, there's a different presentation of professional wrestling that will appeal to some, may not appeal to others. Uh, it, it, to be completely honest, it's not my favorite style, but – 
I can appreciate it for what it is. It, it is a, it is shot in a different format. It is. I, I love the way they do their 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 vignettes and their backstage stuff because it's very movie esque. It's you know what I mean. So so it's different from what everybody else does. And um, right now, it's a niche product. Uh, may not appeal to a a greater audience, but yeah, I do. Uh, what I have seen of it, I do like. All right. Awesome. Yeah, we're because we're always we're always looking for like the next thing around in wrestling, and we think like Lucha Underground might be kind of like gearing toward that way with the with the vignettes and with like the intricate stories and stuff like that, like taking notes from shows like Breaking Bad and stuff like that, and incorporating it into mm-hmm. wrestling. Yeah, and, and the difference there too is that it's they're seasonal, whereas uh, you know you get somebody like the WWE who has to do fifty two weeks of original content. Uh, 365 days a year it's that's that's hard man that you know for all the criticism they get for for their creative process and their booking decisions try writing 52 weeks of live television and not only that it's three hours on monday night two hours uh, of smackdown you've got main event you've got superstars you got all the network stuff that you got to take care of too that's that's a that's a chore so uh, you know uh you get you got to give them credit for at least you know getting a product out there that, 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 okay, it's not going to be a home run every week, but at least, you know, they're, they're, they're putting stuff out there. That's pretty good. I think it's hard enough to put an hour podcast out every week for some of us. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Just imagine that on that, on that, on the, and especially something like that. It's such a huge, huge, huge production. Whenever they roll into town, they're basically building their set every week or twice a week, actually. Sometimes three times a week, mm-hmm. and, and and all the logistics around it just insane. Um, you know, hey, so uh, you know, obviously, you know, you're talking about the wrestling and everything. Um, I know for me, I go to the wrestling shows and, and doing the production as I do. I'm always I watch the production on wrestling, and I know you comment a lot on refereeing <laughs> these days as well. <laughs> like, are you? The question that always enters my mind when 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 you're uh, commenting on, on on things on Monday nights on on Twitter, um, can you? Is it like that thing that you're just just utterly aware of because of your part in it, like I am about camera work? Um, um, or, you know, can you sit back and watch the wrestling without just noticing what that referee is doing, <laughs> or is that a part of the whole package for you? It, it, you hit the nail on the head. It's part of the whole package because I, I've been there. It, it's it's almost second nature to um, to to notice, you know, how the referees react to certain situations and how they handle certain situations. And, and most of the time, if it is a, a, a small critique on something a referee does, I try to do it tongue in cheek because it's, yeah. you know, uh, you know, I, I don't like to, to point out miscues and I try to have fun with it. And, uh, um, obviously there have been others in the past who have taken umbrage with my, my tweeting, but, uh, Hey, you know what? You, you, you're on national television. We're, we're, we're all in, not infallible. Everybody makes mistakes and, uh, you know, you have to let it roll off your back. Awesome, awesome, uh, Mike. Before we get to our closes, I want to see if you got one more question here for uh, for Mr. Corderas. Uh, yeah, what was your favorite match that you've ever refereed? Um, see, that's that's hard because I have to say that the WrestleMania 24 match with Edge versus the Undertaker in uh, Orlando uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship has got to be the I mean, like, does it, even for a referee, does it get bigger than than the main event of a WrestleMania? And and, and the the thing that made that match special for me was the fact that uh, both Edge and Undertaker uh, requested that I referee that match, which was a huge honor because, um, you know, people I've been asked before that uh, they say, "How would you like to be remembered in 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 the wrestling business?" I said, "The, the only thing I'd like to be remembered as as a, as a guy that the boys can count on someone reliable, someone they never had to worry about that. If, if my name was beside theirs on the board as the referee for that match, that they didn't have to, they didn't have to worry. Oh my goodness. Now we got to worry about the referee mm-hmm. as well. That, that they didn't have anything to worry about that. I would uh, mm-hmm. help them as best, as best I can. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that match would have to be number one, but I, there was a match on SmackDown a few years before that, um, that would have to rank as one B if I have to, <laughs> I don't want to rank it as number two. It's almost like, it's almost like WrestleMania match was one A. This match was one B. 
I did a match uh, with Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle that stretched through like three segments of SmackDown, and it was in Chicago at the then Allstate Arena, now uh, Rose, well, it was a Rosemont Horizon, it was Allstate Arena. Um, it, it just, you know when everything just feels right and everything just feel, felt like it clicks? That's how that match was that night. It, it, it just felt right. And for someone like Eddie, who is, um, who's uh, like similar to myself, his own worst is, uh, uh, as he was with his. So, um, that would have to rank as one B, as I said, but there's been tons of them. I can't, uh, all for different reasons. There's some that just because of the great wrestling, there's some just because of the ha ha that went on. <laughs> it just had me laughing during the match, you know, but, uh, definitely, uh, definitely the WrestleMania and that Eddie Guerrero, Kurt Angle match. Awesome. Uh, from the chat room, I just want to get some mentions from the guys in there since they're asking. First of all, sure. our buddy Matt Carlin's our friend in the mainstream media down here, uh, works for the news station and helps us with a lot of the articles. Uh, he says, speaking of Aftermath you were talking about before, uh, he just wants to say he missed your podcast you used to do with uh, Orda Ocal. Yes, uh, Arda, uh, a.k.a. Kyle Edwards and I, we used mm -hmm. to... Uh, we, we used to do uh, – actually, we were on Sirius Satellite Radio for a while, and then uh, we did a podcast. It, it started off – it was called uh, Right After Wrestling because it was on Monday nights, live after Raw. Get it? Right I, I, after I, I, I see what you did there. That's good. Yeah. Oh, he did that. <laughs> I, I got to give him credit. He's the one who came up with that. Uh, but then we, we – uh, it morphed into Aftermath, and we also used to do a podcast called Ask the Ref where – We'd have people, you know, send in questions and I would answer them. And uh, depending on the question, it was either a serious answer or with my warped sense of humor, one or the other. That's awesome. And we're also being told by Tregar in here. Uh, he gives a pretty good pulse on the indies. Uh, I guess today it was announced that you will be a part of the House of, uh, Tommy Dreamer's uh, House of Hardcore uh, coming up. I believe it's that Toronto show. Uh, it's actually not far from Toronto. It's going to be in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, I just I, I actually spoke to Tommy today and uh, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the host of Hardcore show that was in Toronto last uh, last Ju uh, July, was it? I, oh, I didn't want to screw up on the date. So I'll just say it was last summer. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was great to see a lot of old friends, too. And uh, I will be at this one, May 7th in Niagara Falls, Ontario at the Scotia Bank Center. It's going to be a it's going to be a blast, and it's going to be fun. That's awesome. That's completely awesome. Uh, we usually – I know we got a little bit into it. Obviously, we're watching WWE. You're watching a lot of the other stuff. Um, anything kind of surprising that uh, we usually just kind of generally like to ask, uh, what are you watching these days as inspiration or whatever the case may be? Uh, anything uh, uh, out of the ordinary that you're really paying attention to or anybody, one, you're kind of that's kind of sticking out to you? And it can be a referee. That's uh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, um, uh, for me, the biggest uh, – wrestling-wise – if you're, if you're talking wrestling-wise, the biggest thing that's shocking to me right now, uh, well, two things. I'm going to go off, off the WWE board for a second sure. uh, because uh, I'm going to mention TNA here because uh, I'm, I'm a very big fan of what Matt Hardy is doing in TNA and also EC3. I love, I love the way they did that double turn. And, and you know, I, I – you know, contrary to popular opinion, I do want them to succeed. Um, do I see them becoming a viable competitor to the WWE? Probably not, but it is another alternative brand out there for people to watch. And it's also, um, you know, gives the guys somewhere else that they could possibly work. You know what I mean? So I hope they do succeed. And I think with Matt and his new persona on Twitter, uh, <laughs> um, I, I'm enjoying that and as far as WWE goes uh, how can you uh, not mention the return of Shane O'Mac on, uh, <laughs> on WWE television yeah, yeah, yeah I mean like, let, me, let me put it this way those who say they saw it coming are either fibbing a little bit or they need to go play the Powerball because there was a uh, uh, I don't think anybody saw that outside of the small circle of people who knew it. I don't think anybody saw that coming. It's certainly nice when they can still surprise us after all these years, right? Especially even being part of the business. It, yeah. It's, and it's so tough today because in this world of social media, or sometimes as I like to refer to it as anti-social media, mm -hmm. um, 
it, and, and all the information that gets out there and leaks out there, it, it is so nice. It, it, the fan in me like beams and gets goosebumps every time something legitimately surprises me on a Monday night where I can say, they got me. I love it. I love that they got me, you know? <laughs> That's amazing. Um, let's see. I need to alter this last question because we usually ask uh, what. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to ask this uh, the way we normally do because we usually ask sure. what's the best and the worst thing about working in indie wrestling. And of course, you are doing a lot of these shows, uh, like we mentioned, House of Hardcore. You and I believe, uh, if I'm mistaken, you're working with uh, Smash Wrestling as well, right? Uh, so yeah, I do. Yeah, up here in Toronto, there's a little outfit called Smash Wrestling. Uh, mm -hmm. They put on some really good shows and. Uh, I like the people. You know what I mean. There, there is a good atmosphere. It's, uh, it, it's just fun. You know what I mean. It's, it's kind of like a once a month thing. It gets, gets my little, uh, scratches my itch, so to speak, and I'm, I'm good. It's, it's <laughs> like, uh, it's like having that one nice cold beer just to, you know, ease, ease tension kind of thing. So if I can extend, so what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? And if you can. You don't have to go too deep in this. What's the best and worst thing right. about working in WWE all those years? Uh, uh, the best thing about working in indie wrestling is when you see the guys that have genuine passion that want to succeed and want to further themselves. It, it is so cool, and and it's it's and it's really humbling that um, coming from the background I came from that that these uh, young men and women would ask for my advice of all things, you know, like, uh, and, and for me that, like I said, it's very humbling, very flattering that they would ask. Um, what I don't like about indie wrestling is the, uh, the cutthroat nature of, uh, competing indie promotions that are in the same region. It's like, it, man, it's worse than high school sometimes, and I hate, I hate to put it that way, but it is. It's just it's just ridiculous. And and if it, you know, look, guys, none of those promoters out there. You're not Vince McMahon. You're not going to make millions of dollars. <laughs> the best thing you could all do is kind of work together and help each other out to make the best product possible for everybody out there, so that you know the fans can actually enjoy the show instead of you know having to deal with. Gaga. But anyways, that's my thing. Uh, best and worst thing for working with the WWE. I mean, look, I, I, I don't know. There's, there's just too much good there. I mean, they, it's the number one company in the world. They treat you right. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, there is, um, it's a cliche to, that they say where, you know, your road family is like your family. And uh, obviously, you know, there's, it's kind of clicks. Everybody has their own groups that they hang out with. But at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, everybody's got each other's back. And that's what I love about uh, the WWE and, you know, pretty much wrestling in, in general. What I, the, the thing I dislike most about the WWE is the travel schedule. It's, it, it is hard. I mean, obviously, for, you, when you do it for 20 years, your body has adjusted and it's kind of like, it's almost like walking with your eyes closed with your roller bag through the airport, dumping it on the the baggage belt for, for x-ray. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you're just going through the motions. And now you're taking out your wallet, you're throwing your laptop in there. Uh, but still, um, if there was a way that the future could come today and they could invent a damn transporter. <laughs> so, you, so people could like, like be me to Houston, Scotty or something like that for the next show. That would be fantastic. You know, but until then, uh, you know, you got to do it the old fashioned way. What can you say? That's Mind awesome. you, I'd probably be like Bones and and complain that I don't want my atoms scattered all over the universe. So. <laughs> damn, damn, damn it, I'm a referee. <laughs> yeah, right? damn it, I'm a referee, not a doctor. <laughs> Awesome, man! It, it, I feel like I could uh, probably talk to you about uh, 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 this stuff for hours. Uh, hope to see you back in Pittsburgh sometime. Uh, so, uh, what's going on? I know you got a book. You got you mentioned the show, of course. You're coming up in a lot of promotions. Uh, what's going on? Where, what can people check out with you uh, these days? Yeah, um, well, to, to to plug another person's website here, if I may. Uh, well, fellow Pittsburghian, there, Justin Labar. Uh, Chair Shop Reality website. I write a weekly column for them. Um, comes out every Wednesday. 
Uh, I, obviously, if you're up here in Canada, you can catch uh, Aftermath Television on uh, Sportsnet 360. It's 10 p.m. Wednesday nights after SmackDown. Usually replays on Friday as well, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, you can catch me and John Pollock on the Fight Network reviewing and previewing uh, all sorts of pay-per-views for – for the WWE and you can catch me on Twitter where Monday nights and pay-per-views are loads of laughs. And, and uh, as you can attest to Michael, uh, I do have a little fun on Monday nights. I, I tend to amuse myself a little bit. And uh, also I have a, uh, uh, it might sound like bragging, but Hey, I'm going to say it anyways. My personal Facebook page is maxed out. So I also <laughs> have a, a uh, Facebook fan page, which I post, uh, a whole bunch of wrestling related stuff. It's uh, former WWE referee Jimmy Cordaris, and you can hit me up there if you want. Awesome! Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Go check him out. Uh, pick his, pick his, yeah, oh, We can pick your brain a little bit on the Twitters too, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, that's the, but the problem with Twitter is you can you only get 140 characters. You like sometimes you need about 1,400 to explain what you want to say. Exactly, and. Uh, the other thing, too, is a lot of my responses tend to be, eh, I'll say it, a little smart-ass-ish <laughs> kind of. Uh, because I, I, I want it to be fun. People take you know, things a little too seriously. So I try to have a little bit of fun with it. But it's hard to detect sarcasm <laughs> yes. <laughs> in yes. written form. So uh, people mistake uh, – me having fun with me getting pissed off, and I don't. I, I, I'm I truly have fun with it, and uh, it, uh, unless someone crosses the line, and then it, I'll just JBL them and block them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a badge of honor for some people that 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 blocks exactly. somebody from wrestling. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Check out everything he's got going on. Really cool dude. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on, and uh, and I'm able to come be coming to your neck of the woods as well. Uh, we're going to take a look back to the uh, 10 year anniversary for Wrestling Mayhem show we had here in the area, of course, uh, at Looking for Group in Pittsburgh, and we'll be right back talking a little bit more about independent pro wrestling. In, in my bulletin board that I have, there used to be this kid uh, called Your Craps Week, and he invited uh, he invited me to, to watch the show. So I started watching it uh, a little bit more and more and more until I got hooked, and, and eventually you started getting my money. So now I'm totally hooked. <laughs> <laughs> We are back. Check out that. A bunch of videos of our 10-year anniversary for the Wrestling Mayhem show over at uh, Celebration we had in January at Looking for Group Pittsburgh over in Brookline here in, uh, in the south side of Pittsburgh, uh, south hills of Pittsburgh, I guess. Uh, so, uh, hey, a lot of indie wrestling happened this weekend. I know I was double booked. I haven't even seen the RWA show uh, at, that went down, but I know there's a lot of uh, videos floating around. Our, our friends Dutters and, and, and my wife. And Chachi were there um, on behalf of Sorgatron Media. So uh, I'll catch up with that. Maybe I can chime in on that a little bit later. Uh, but I did experience, Eamon, um, um, International Wrestling Cartel is their Proving Grounds show. A lot of debuts. Um, and we talked about a little bit of Wrestling Mayhem show. Oh, oh Broken Rope. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it was, a, 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 we mentioned a Wardlow, big guy, big muscular guy. Comes out with Justin Labar. Typically, uh, he was he came out as kind of the enforcer for the, our friends, the sexy, talented dudes, the STDs, May, Indie Mayhem 100. That I can't is very fuzzy to me. Um, uh, taking on Andrew Palace, Planet Bulk, um, and and Warla comes out and hops on the apron, grabs the rope, boom, breaks right off. It looks like just the one rope, like it, it pulled right out of the turnbuckle. Uh, so they 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 continued the rest of the match uh, without a top rope. Basically, they took the entire thing off. And, uh, and and they fixed it. They kind of rearranged or reattached uh, 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 over intermission, of course. Uh, but I gotta say, like, thankfully this happened. One, it was the right guy. The big guy broke it, right? Right. Not like little Corey futuristic or anything like that. The big guy, <laughs> the big, the big guy broke it. Like you know, it'd be like if you hopped up there and broke broke the rope. Like that'd look ridiculous, right? Also, of all the matches for it to break, the not serious one. Everybody looks goofy. <laughs> Uh, in a in a five on four tag match, and you're everybody's standing there on the corner with no top rope, and then that's 
Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think, you know, like you said, because I mean, like a moment like that could have been, you know, in a more like, you know, a serious match. It's like, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, things are getting intense or whatever. But like you said, you know, sexy talented dudes, friends of the show, obviously, but not that kind of style of wrestlers, I guess you could say. Right, right, right. So, I mean, it was a lot of fun. And like I said, a lot of other debuts. Chris LaRusso had his first match uh, officially with the IWC with Keith Hott, another friend of the show. Um, I thought that uh, uh, I thought it went really well. I, I it, it was again, I, and 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 more and more, I'm I'm kind of attributing this to Keith as well. Like it feels like he gets put in these um, kind of throwaway matches on the mm. card for IWC, uh, unfortunately. But but they become good matches. You know, uh, they, they they become surprisingly good and fun matches. Uh, that you know, it, it, it wasn't just something to 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 put over. The Russo, like it, it actually was a good match all around, um, and I thought that was good to see. Um, other than that, I'm trying to find a picture of this ridiculous people standing. Yeah, actually, here's a little picture of that. If you guys are uh, on the video version, uh, thanks to Dan Hooven, some great pictures. Yeah, it just looks looks a little odd, a little bit hanging out there, <laughs> but. Uh, um, <laughs> But it was a lot of fun. Uh, some great debuts. Um, this guy, this one guy, got my attention. Uh, Shane in your face. I, I don't know. I've about heard that. of Shane in your face. You've heard of him. Um, I'm not sure what to make of the name. Apparently, he is an MMA guy. I actually had a conversation with uh, a guy that is a good friend of his and got a little bit of background on him. Um, that actually himself is a bodybuilder and does a lot of other really interesting, cool things in the Pittsburgh area. That actually, my other show, uh, he actually, actually, he his friend was a guest on um, uh, Awesome Cast uh, about a month or so ago. Um, I he he brought the crowd, and again, I, I don't know if you saw our tweets from Saturday night, but there was like some people dressed up as a uh, as a Macho Man and 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 Billion Dollar Man and everything, right? Some people with face paint with the with, with Shane's T shirt, apparently, right? Um, so again, he's had a career in MMA and I guess he's had a bit of a brand around his career in MMA. Like he's had some, some at least lower level success. I, I, I don't know the entire history there. Uh, but he, I think he represented well. He had a match with Dylan Bostic, uh, who's, you know, a, a great, a great guy in his own right. Uh, a friend of the show, uh, definitely, you know, a, a, a super indie champion and everything. Um, I'm trying. To, I had a great picture of him here a moment ago, but uh, no, I think I think I think if anybody you would pick is probably being the person that's going to make the biggest impression. Um, it's Shane. Uh, he, he he attacks. He wrestles like an MMA guy. He you know he he, he came out with the most purpose. Um, they did a lot with him that night. Uh, you know him kind of teaming helping out a little bit with Britt Baker. Uh, but again, he had a crowd there. He has people's attention. Um, and, and if he, I think if he, if he works, I think he's going to be a really good, uh, uh, addition to this. Um, I, I attribute it to even Brit last year at Proving Grounds, like came out and boom, she looked like she belonged there. Right. And you, yeah. you've seen, you've seen like guys debut their first match in your, your time with Inspire and other promotions. Right. And you're like, okay, yeah, here we go. Okay. You know, he's, he's a little, mm-hmm. little, 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 okay. That didn't connect. Okay. That's not, it doesn't seem like he knows what to do here. It doesn't really flow as well. Right. Um, this seemed to go, this seemed to go. And, 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 and it could be just because he had a great guy to work with in uh, Dylan, but I think there's a lot of promise there. So I, I think, I think the new guy MVP of this show is definitely Shane in your face. Um, Side note: We really want to try to convince the announcer to to think it was Japanese, and <laughs> and, and enough face. But uh, that unfortunately didn't happen. Um, can't do that. Can't do that to poor Dave. Um, but other than that, great fun night. The fraternity was awesome. Great to see Blue Collar Slaughterhouse back in the back in the full with IWC again uh, in the tag team side of things. Uh, really great uh, main event match. Uh, Darren De Niro, friend of the show against other friend of the show, the champion, uh, uh, Jimmy Nuts. Um, good show. They packed 300 people into this small gymnasium. Yes. <laughs> like a small gymnasium. It was fantastic. The crowd was on fire through most of the night. Um, and this is a brand new venue. This is a brand new venue an hour north of the city. And typically we're 45 minutes south of the city when we're doing the other shows uh, with IWC. So for being a first time... Awesome, completely awesome, and I, I hope we do come back uh, up there. As much as I really, I was really just fretting going that far out of town again for yet another show. 
Um, no, I think it worked out very well. I think it worked out very, very, very well. So, Eamon, you had some wrestling this weekend as well. I did, sort of. Uh, it's a very interesting wrestling this weekend. Uh, most definitely at uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling, the company I'm involved with. Uh, we had our Phases of Vengeance event uh, this past Sunday in Austin, Texas. Uh, and it was quite the event. I was very happy with what we were able to produce on that show. Um, a lot of matches where uh, I, I would, I said on Twitter, I was very hard pressed to come up with a uh, with a uh, uh, match that I loved the most from that uh, event because they were all really great and really delivered. Um, a lot of good stuff. Uh, our main event was uh, Keith Lee, friend of the show, uh, uh, who you may have seen on social media uh, if you follow if you follow Inspire Pro on social media or uh, uh, Indie Wrestling at US that we may get to later. Uh, who Moonsaulted up the top rope at one point. Uh, her come on. If you've never seen Keith Lee before, you, you, you hadn't listened to our interview with him. Uh, he's a 300-pound-plus man uh, who can do some absolutely amazing things. Uh, uh, and he retained his pure perceived title in that match, so it was very, very impressive. Uh, also great to have Joey Ryan down of, of uh, you know, Viral Sensation, Lucha Underground famed, uh, uh, and and you porn sponsored uh, competitor uh, <laughs> go up against Joey Ryan. Uh, he promised to make a viral video, and and uh, he basically uh, did a lot. Uh, uh, at one point, um, uh, he had proposed to Cherry Ramones, much like he proposed to his real life girlfriend in the middle of a match, only to sucker him into the uh, the uh, you porn plex, the famed uh, you porn plex. Uh, that that broke out all over the internet. Um, yeah, it was really great to have him down. Very good guy, uh, awesome to work with, and uh, super talented. Um, and and some people may have also saw it, uh, a bit of an unexpected appearance at the show from a uh, uh, former WWE star, current Lucha Underground star Johnny Mundo, uh, uh, stopped on by our show uh, to uh, help promote uh, Lucha Underground's upcoming event in Austin during South by Southwest weekend. Um, or excuse me, during South by Southwest, it's not just a weekend. Um, yeah, uh, got to help promote the show, gave away some free tickets, uh, gave away some merchandise. Uh, it was very cool to have Johnny there uh, to help promote uh, Lucha Underground. Uh, uh, from what I heard, he very much enjoyed the show as well. Uh, so yeah, it was great to have him down and, and somebody who not only is doing something big in Lucha, but also who has done such big things in the WWE as well. You know, checking us out and, and liking what he saw was a really great honor. So, uh, yeah, a lot of really fun stuff there. Um, you should uh, hopefully the event will be coming out soon on Smart Mark Video. We've we've gotten a pretty good system where these can get rolled out pretty quickly uh, nowadays. So uh, I know the DVD is already being worked on, so you can go uh, keep an eye out for when that comes out on SmartMarkVideo.com and SMVOD.com. Uh, you can also buy tickets for our next event, which is a little ways away. We're taking off March because of South by Southwest. Uh, however, we'll be back in April, uh, April 22nd, for our next event called Splendor in the Smash, uh, which uh, is maybe my favorite name for our show. Uh, we've also released the graphic for it, which may be my favorite graphic that we've ever done for the show. Uh, and if you want to check that out, you can go to inspireprowrestling.com. You can also go to uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, Facebook's Inspire Pro Wrestling, Twitter at Inspire Pro Res. So definitely go check us out over there. Awesome. And, and say, so just look at that a little bit in this article here uh, from around the Indies. Uh, some great videos. Uh, uh, Dutters, Katie Dutters, uh, Dudas, uh, was actually manning our uh, Indie Wrestling uh, Twitter account and got a lot of video, actually, of the night uh, over at uh, RWA's uh, uh, crazy, crazy night. There was a lot of, there was, there was street fights, uh, friends of the show like Memphis Mofo uh, uh, doing crazy stuff. There was a, a, a dog collar match between uh, Ryan Rain and Ashton Amherst. That got pretty crazy, um, and uh, it, it looked like it was a pretty nutty night, uh, and I uh, can't wait to get to around to editing that. Unfortunately, uh, we are stacked up pretty good uh, with having to post-edit that and having to put out the IWC uh, show as well. Look for both of those. I'm hoping to have both of those out to you uh, by the end of the week at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, DVDs will probably be in about another week or so. So, um, wow. So, uh, other than that, it feels like... <laughs> Did the nexus of important things in indie wrestling happen around other sh our shows? I see that uh, uh, Jade, uh, uh, or you know, uh, Mia, uh, is, she, is she just Jade everywhere? She's not Mia Yim. Uh, no, she she's still going by Mia Yim. Okay, uh, I, um, I, I see she popped up at Shine um, over the weekend. 
uh, a lot of stuff going there, taking on Kimberly. Uh, we had some stuff with uh, 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 Trevor Lee. Actually, uh, uh, what did he do? He won. Oh, he had a uh, – he, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, competed in a close to two-hour-long wrestling match. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I think it was the, the final time. It was like an hour, 44 minutes, uh, uh, which I think may be one of the longest matches in indie wrestling that I can that I, at least I can think of. Wow. And, um, and then on top of that, on top of that, uh, there was some posts going around like uh, – so the big night, like I said, three three hundred people. They're saying uh, for IWC up in um, Rural Valley, Rural Valley, PA. This is a community mm-hmm. center. This was in the middle of nowhere. Like I had trouble finding an open gas station afterwards. Okay, that's where right. we that 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 gives you an idea where we were. Okay, um, and 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 then uh, RWA once again setting another a month to month record. I think they were officially sold out. Correct me in the in the chat room if you can. Wheels. Um, spectacular showings there indie wrestling is has got an energy they're filling they're putting butts in seats um and and that's you know i, I think uh, i've heard people say in the past 300s 300s the target number for a lot of these promotions to make everything work basically right um but then you have omega and big time wrestling who do shows all over the place big time wrestling uh yeah. and omega is is like matt hardy the hardy boys uh a uh, uh, promotion as well uh and uh they packed in four thousand people in uh raleigh north carolina holy crap this this is i can't believe this is an indie show I, 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 it's, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Um, the alternatives, the true alternatives of pro wrestling are out there and alive and well. And, and it's awesome. The, this, I, you know, you guys, I'm sure had a great showing out there with inspire as well. You guys usually do packing that place. Oh, absolutely. And then, yeah, it's just really cool seeing you wrestling get to that level. Cause you, I think people always assume that it's, you know, the, the small level, you know, uh, gymnasiums and all that stuff that are filling, you know, a couple hundred. And for a company like Omega, you know, say we have whatever you will about like the Hardys and stuff like that, for them to draw 4,000 people is really great. Like there are some top level, uh, you know, TNA, I think, would wish, would hope that it, that they could draw 4,000 people at yeah. some times, you know? Yeah, unfortunately. Um, so it's, it's just cool to see. It's cool to see wrestling thrive. It's cool to see. You know, we I think I've said it many times on the show, but it's you know, people think that wrestling has sort of died off and it's not, you know, reached that boom period that it was in the mid nineties or excuse me, in the in the late nineties. Um, but yeah, it's I think it's back. I, I really think qual if not attendance wise all the time, then at least quality wise, I think it's really there's really been a great wrestling resurgence happening. Exactly. And and to be fair, the big time Omega show and, and big time in general, it's not like they don't have big names on there that are that are attractions yeah. so it, it, it's not like you know the trevor lees and the joey ryan's it's it's still matt hardy but again there's plenty of other stars on there that aren't the matts and jeffs and shane helms and ethan carr the third um i mean this <laughs> or the the powers of pain and the rock and roll express who will always draw in the south let's be honest about that uh, yeah that's <laughs> no matter how old they are um you know that kind of stuff so um I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting to see. Wait, is uh, am I seeing Trevor Lee's the X Division champion? He is. The, he is the current X Division. I champion. was not aware of that. Okay. You you don't follow TNA? No, I'm not. I know. I I I've been wanting to, but uh, <laughs> I, know I have not been able to. Last night it was like t- Extreme Tiger or something. So. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or Tigre, you know, as they call him. Wait, well, there you go. There you go. More in tune with the Indies when it comes to that. So, um, Amen. So good talk indie wrestling with you. Thank you to Sorg. our guest. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say Sorg the same. <laughs> Thank you to our guest, Jimmy Corderas. Check him out. Go check out his book. Go check out his account, Jimmy Corderas. He's he's great to talk with, uh, and, and and he's retweeting and, and chatting with everybody and kind of poking fun of everybody a little bit. Every Monday night, if you're in Canada, you're so lucky because he's on your TV set. Uh, so uh, go check out all that stuff. Thank you, Amen at Amen Two, please on the Twitter. We've talked about Inspire Pro Wrestling enough. You know where to find it uh, at Sorgatron. And thank you, everybody, supporting Indie Mayhem Show and support Indie Wrestling.
show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.